Hey guys, it's Tombi, and welcome back to Pottery to the Players, my series where I make pottery from video games. Animal Crossing is one of the most nostalgic games for me, and I really wanted to bring some of the in-game pottery to life. So I'm going to show you the process of me making these real ceramic pots using some fancy and expensive dirt. <laughs> Let's head on over to the crafting table to prep our clay, because it's not as easy as it looks in Animal Crossing. I keep my clay in this plastic bin so it doesn't dry out, but we still have to do something called wedging, which is kind of like kneading bread, but way more tiring. It's really tough working with unevenly soft clay, so wedging makes sure that all of the clay is the same consistency. The last step of preparing the clay is weighing out individual balls. This is going to help me keep all the pots roughly the same size. Let's head over to the wheel. Wait, I meant the pottery wheel. Okay, that was a really dumb joke, but now we can get started with wheel throwing. This is my favorite part of the pottery process because you can turn an ordinary ball of clay into a beautiful pot in minutes. I'm making more pots than I need for this project because you never know when something can go wrong in ceramics. After letting the pots dry a bit, we can start to trim them. To trim, we're going to use these sharp metal tools to take off excess clay and refine the shape of our pots. Now we only have to repeat this 10 more times. Now that all our pots are trimmed, we can start painting on their base colors. I'm gonna paint from messiest to least messy, so we're gonna start with the pots that are all white. First up is this zigzag pot. Next up is this pot that is mostly white, but has a brown rim. To paint the pots, I'm using something called underglaze, which is the ceramic version of paint. You can even mix colors, which doesn't usually work with normal glazes. I'm adding a bit of yellow to this red-brown color that I mixed for the last pot, and I'm going to use this as an undercoat to add some depth to the black pot. I want to be able to see the brush strokes for this one, so I'm leaving it a little bit streaky, which looks kind of terrible here, but I promise it'll all come together. And the last pot I'm painting a base coat on is the default pot. This one is the messiest, and you may be wondering why. I'm using brown clay thinned with water instead of underglaze, and I feel like brown clay somehow always gets everywhere. And the other downside of this is that the brown clay is pretty gritty, so I want to smooth it out. To do this, I'm using the back of a spoon to push all the sandy bits back into the clay. This is called burnishing, and it leaves the clay super smooth and shiny. And here are all of the pots after painting on the base coats. There was one more, but I didn't end up painting that one because it's just beige, and the clay itself is also beige. The pots are going into the kiln now for the first firing, that way everything we painted on so far won't come off. Here's how the pots look afterwards. Before we keep going, we're going to use some water to get rid of any clay dust on the pots that might have come from the kiln. And now that our pots are dust free, we can continue with painting. I started off by adding an additional layer of black with a super stiff brush for some more texture. Oh, whoops, you didn't see that. Next, I'm adding the squiggly pattern on the default pot. I'm sketching it out with a pencil first before I paint it because that seems like the right thing to do. Oh. 
and then it's on to the zigzag pot. Honestly, this one is pretty difficult because it's hard to get even spacing between the zigs and the zags. The pattern for the beige pot can smell your fear. This one is all about confident strokes. I'm just sort of going for it here. I don't really have the confidence to do this, but I'm just sort of pretending like I do. And lastly is this pot, which I don't even know how to describe, but it's pretty complex. I even had to open up the game to double check what it looked like from the other sides, because I didn't want the responsibility of coming up with what the other sides would look like by myself. That's the last of the pots, so we're off to the kill now to glaze and fire. To prepare to glaze the pots, we're going to start by putting wax on the bottoms. This keeps glaze off the bottom of the pot, and it prevents pots from sticking to and ruining the kiln. I've got to be really careful not to get wax where I don't want it because it's super hard to get off afterwards. This is the glaze that we're going to be using today. It may look like just a big bucket of grey mud, but really, it's much more than that. After it gets fired, it's going to become a clear and satiny smooth finish on our pots. So let's dunk these bad boys in the glaze. There's actually a lot of technique that goes into this, and I gotta swish it around to make sure all the surfaces are completely coated. Once they're dry, I'm going to load them into the kiln. This kiln is getting fired to over 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, and it usually takes a couple days. But lucky for you, they're already done. And drum roll, please. <laughs> And there they are. If you enjoyed this video, remember to tap the like button and please share this with your friends who you think would also enjoy this. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button. I have lots of plans for more pots from video games, as well as home DIYs and pottery studio vlogs. So yeah, my name is Tombi, and this is Studio Tombi. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye!